turn right onto President Street. We're going to make our way into a neighborhood called Harbor East. And again, much of what we see in this section of the city is going to be relatively new. A lot of new development over here in recent years. In the last 15 to 20 years, we've seen a number of new high rises going up over here, apartment buildings, hotels. There is some history over here on this side of the harbor though as well. Coming up ahead of us, just to the right of that Eastern Avenue sign directly uh, ahead is the most glamorous building in Baltimore, one of the most beautiful buildings in the city. That's the sewage pumping station, folks. <laughs> and I joke about it, but it really is a beautiful building. They laid the cornerstone in 1910 when Baltimore was reinventing itself moving all of the utilities underground. This was a state-of-the-art facility, and guess what? More than 100 years later, it still works. That pump still processes a lot of the wastewater here in Baltimore City. And I'm always amazed that so much care and creativity went into the design of something as seemingly mundane as the sewage pumping station. So Edgar would not have seen this when he was here in Baltimore. During his time in Baltimore, there wasn't underground sewage. There were open sewers out in the street. A lot of that sewage was impacting the seafood trade. The fishermen came to Annapolis in the latter part of the 19th century and said, you've got to do something about this. And that's when funds were finally allocated to build this pump station here in the early 20th century and relocate all of those utilities underground. Uh, straight, actually, we want to go around the circle. Yes, we got to get over to one lane to the right. Now here on the right-hand side is another building that was almost here at the same time as Edgar. This building actually was constructed the same year that Poe died. Here on the right-hand side, it's all that remains of what used to be a much larger train station called the President Street Train Station. Now this train station is significant because shortly after the beginning of the American Civil War, the first shots of the Civil War officially fired at Fort Sumter in South Carolina in April of 1861. But not long after that, a regiment of troops from Massachusetts disembarked from a train here at the President Street train station and began a march across downtown Baltimore where they would board another train over near where the ballpark is located today and continue south towards our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. But along the way they were met by an angry mob of Confederate sympathizers and a riot broke out. When the dust settled, a dozen Baltimoreans and four Union soldiers had been killed. It was the very first bloodshed of the Civil War. Under Armour is. Again, this neighborhood, Harbor East, all relatively new, mm -hmm. lots of great retail opportunities, hotels and restaurants. In the center of the Harbor East Circle there, we see the National Cotton Memorial. That honors those who died during the Cotton Massacre at the height or at the beginning of World War II. And you know, every time you see something lit up in purple in Baltimore, like the Under Armour logo right here, purple, of course, the color of our Baltimore Ravens football team, but every time you see something lit up like that in purple, you can thank Edgar Allan Poe. Because our football team would not be called the Baltimore Ravens were it not for Edgar Allan Poe's connection to our city. Under Armour was invented by a man named Kevin Plank, who was a football player at the University of Maryland and the self-described sweatiest guy on the team. He was sick and tired of going into the locker room after games and practices only to find his cotton t-shirt soaked in sweat. So he decided to develop a synthetic fabric that would help wick the sweat away from the athlete's body, keeping the athlete cool and dry. It became known as Under Armour, and today it's a multi-billion dollar corporation headquartered right here in our city. So you'll see Under Armour all over town. This is Uzo Bay over here on our left-hand side. Uzo Beach to the right. During the summer months, you'll see lots of folks out here at the water's edge enjoying the beautiful weather. This bridge here that we're about to turn onto is also brand new, connecting the east side of Baltimore, Central Avenue, with the new development up here at Harbor East and Harbor Point. So we're seeing a lot of exciting things happening over here in this neck of the woods.
Now from this vantage point, looking out to your right, we'll get a good look at the Baltimore City skyline and the Inner Harbor. On a night like this, the lights shine even brighter, it seems. We can also see the ongoing development in this section of Baltimore. The cranes, the heavy equipment, as this waterfront property is developed. I'm not sure exactly what we can expect to see here, but I know it's going to be really, really cool. Just keep following this straight ahead and around to the left. Now we're going to move from one of Baltimore's newest neighborhoods to one of our oldest, Fells Point, which can trace its history back to the early 18th century. The streets here in this community were first laid out by a family of English Quakers in 1726. The Fell family came here and created this community, which for many years was its own municipality. Fells Point was its own independent city until 1797, when the city of Baltimore was officially incorporated. Once we go through this stop sign here, you'll notice the ride gets a bit bumpy. That's because instead of asphalt in Fells Point, the streets are paved with Belgian block. Many of these Belgian blocks at one time were ballast in the ships that would come into the harbor here in this section of town. Looking to our right across the harbor, we see the worldwide headquarters of Under Armour. And here in Fells Point, we're going to see a lot of buildings, a lot of architecture that is probably, probably would have been familiar to Edgar Allan Poe. It's not unreasonable to believe that he may have visited some of these pubs while living here and while visiting the city later in his life. Some believe his ghost still walks the streets of Fells Point to this day. Coming up on our left-hand side is a very unusual sight. I want to take a picture. It's a record store. <laughs> we don't see many of those anymore, do we? The Soundgarden, one of the coolest stores in Baltimore, not just records, but DVDs and T-shirts, all kinds of neat stuff. Now, just a few doors down from the Soundgarden is a pub called the Horseshoe Came In On Saloon, right here with the wooden door. Now, if you look carefully at their sandwich board out here and at the sign on the door, you will see a sign that says Poe's Last Stop. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. We're just going to keep on going. We're going to make a left on Ann Street. Well, this pub claims to be the oldest continually operating pub in North America. They can trace their history back to 1775. So they've been serving drinks in that building since before the American Revolution. They've had different owners and different names through all those years, but they've always been a pub. Now, they like to claim that they were Edgar Allan Poe's last stop. We know now that's not entirely true. We're going to talk a little bit more about Poe's last stop here in just a few moments. But, in my opinion, it's not unreasonable to believe that Poe may have been there during that fateful trip to Baltimore. He certainly would have been familiar with this neighborhood. Remember, his family lived over here on the east side of the harbor before moving to the house on Amity Street. So he would have been very familiar with these neighborhoods, with these streets, and certainly with these pubs. So while it wasn't his last stop, it's not unreasonable to believe that he certainly enjoyed at least a drink or two in what today is known as the horse you came in on. They swear up and down that the ghost of Edgar Allan Poe haunts that pub. The story that I heard was one evening, there were two employees left at the bar after everyone had gone home. One employee was a newer employee. He was up front, sweeping the floor and putting all the bar stools up on top of the bar, while the more seasoned employee was in the back room, settling up all of the books. And then we're going to be making a right on the street. 
Well, when this newer employee got to the end of the bar and put the final bar stool up on top, he turned his back, and no sooner had he done so that the bar stool came crashing down. He thought, that's unusual. I thought it was up there securely. I don't know why it fell, so he picked it up and he put it back on the bar, and once again, as soon as he turned his back, that bar stool fell to the ground. Mm. So he calls to the back, to his friend, his colleague working in the back, and says, I can't understand why this bar stool won't stay put. And he says, oh, you know what? That's probably just Edgar messing with you because you're new. And he says, Edgar, what in the world are you talking about? The other employee says, well, don't you know this, this bar is haunted by the ghost of Edgar Allan Poe? And the new employee laughs and says, that's ridiculous. There are no such thing as ghosts. And no sooner do those words escape his lips than all of the bar stools come crashing down. <laughs> right on Fleet, and then we're going to go left on Washington. Now here along Ann Street, yeah, this is Alisana, so not this one, uh, but the next one, we're going to make a right. Here along Ann Street is where we will find some of the oldest architecture in Baltimore. And this is unusual here to our right. We have a block of pastel-colored wooden homes. There aren't very many wooden homes left in Baltimore, but these would have been here during Edgar Allan Poe's life. Probably these and many other wooden homes. Much of Baltimore's wooden architecture, though, was destroyed in the Great Baltimore Fire of 1904. Mm -hmm. Pop quiz, anybody know what year that fire happened? <laughs> uh, very good, yes. The Great Baltimore Fire of 1904 began in February of that year over on the west side of the city, which in those days was the primary business district in Baltimore. Believe it or not, we're quite lucky that the fire began over there in the business district because the fire began on a Sunday. What do you think was happening in the business district on a Sunday in 1904? Not Absolutely much. nothing. So even though that fire raged for many days and destroyed hundreds of acres of downtown Baltimore, believe it or not, there were no significant casualties. Great bookstore over here on the left that we're passing called Greedy Reads. You can probably find some good Poe books and uh, poetry, all kinds of good stuff inside there at Greedy Reads. There's another wooden house up here on the corner at Fleet and Ann Street. Again, this is one of the first neighborhoods to really be developed in Baltimore, stretching out from the water's edge. So many of the houses, many of the structures that we see over here on this side of the harbor date back to that era, the late 18th, early 19th century. Historic preservation is a big priority in this section of Baltimore, so we have a lot of the original buildings still standing. That fire I mentioned raged for many days, destroyed hundreds of acres of downtown Baltimore, and fire brigades from all around the region came here to the city and tried to help us fight those flames. But unfortunately, there wasn't a whole lot they could do. You know why? Because they couldn't screw their fire hoses into our fire hydrants. Believe it or not, there were no uniform codes to regulate things like that back in those days. But after the Great Baltimore Fire, federal regulations were passed, and today, all across the country, fire hoses and fire hydrants are the same size thanks to Baltimore. All it took was a catastrophic fire. The cause of the fire, we believe, is maybe something electrical. Um, it's, it's not known for sure, but because it was in February, it was very cold and very windy, and that caused the flames to spread very, very quickly. Washington Street, so we'll take that left. Looking around Fells Point today, we see a lot of really cool, quirky shops, antique shops, record stores. It's a really fun place to hang out, especially on Halloween. Mm -hmm. 